Bath is a Georgian city. It attracts thousands of tourists every year to view its many beautiful sights. This video is designed to introduce you to the Avon and Somerset Constabulary and their men based at Bath. It will show how the various departments work together to help keep Bath a safer place. The police station is located in the heart of the city. Officers work either an early shift from 6 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon, from 2 until 10 in the evening, or a night shift from 10 until 6 the next morning. Each shift begins with a briefing. for dealing with the public in the station reception. Others will patrol the city in one of the marked police vehicles, responding to any calls as directed. A few officers are members of a specialist department based in Bath that is devoted to searching for and retrieving items from the rivers and shores of the whole force area. For the majority of officers in Bath, their daily duty is patrolling on foot. This is an important aspect of police work, in that it enabled the policemen to come into contact with many members of the public. Contact like this helps to further a good relationship with the average man on the street. Certainly in Bath, the old saying, if you want to know something, Ask a policeman still applies. It is not only the foot officer that will find himself dealing with the public. Members of the traffic department are also approached. These officers work from a different building in Bath. Here there is room for the many traffic vehicles used on the division, as well as a workshop for servicing and repairs. Many of the traffic officers' jobs are to help prevent accidents. The vast majority of these are caused by motorists that have either been drinking or who were travelling at an excessive speed. To combat the fast drivers, three methods are being used. The first is a radar gun. It is pointed by the officer towards the traffic and the speed of the vehicle is displayed at the back of the device. The visible presence of the officer also helps to slow down speeding vehicles. A car-based device is used called VASCAR. The officer operates a switch when the car being followed passes a certain mark. Another switch is operated as they pass another mark. The VASCAR device
then calculates the speed of the first vehicle. The third speed detection device calculates the speed of a vehicle as it passes over two wires across the road. If a vehicle is travelling at an excessive speed, the officer contacts a colleague who is a short distance down the road. This officer then stops the vehicle and cautions or charges the driver according to his speed. If a driver is suspected of having had too much to drink, he is asked to take a roadside test to find out the amount of alcohol in his body system. Should the test be positive, he will be taken to the police station for a further test. By enforcing the law relating to speed and alcohol, the hope is to reduce the number of road accidents. Despite these measures, it is still necessary for the traffic officer to speed to the scene of an accident. In this case, no one was hurt when this lorry went off the road into someone's back garden. Duties often require officers to escort lorries such as this, and on occasions, ambulances through the city centre. Sergeants and inspectors often have to deal with report writing, and on occasions they are asked to suggest and plan schemes to improve the movement of traffic. Whenever a special event is happening in Bath and roads need to be closed, this is left to the traffic department to organise. Linking these two areas of policing together is the control room. Here, all calls to the police are received and the operator on duty then asks the foot officer or traffic vehicle to deal in person with the caller. Good afternoon, Bath Police Control Room. Can I help you? Me to You've had a video stolen. Can I have your uh, name of the premises, please? London Camera Exchange. Is that in Westgate Street? Right. What kind of video is it? The control room officer obtains as much information about the theft and the thief as he is able. This information is given out on the radio and a constable asks to call on the shop manager. The constable will check all the details with the shop and then confirm these with the control room who again transmit the details to all officers. Got into a red maxi in the high street. Number is November Kilo Juliet 581 whisk Whiskey drove off towards Walcott Street. That's general observations to all officers on duty. A foot patrol officer reacts when a car matching the description of the thieves passes him. The control room then asks for the assistance of any car that may be near. I understand the vehicle involved in the robbery is going to Lansdowne Road and left in the Julian Road. Right on route from Great Portland Street.
think they went up that way. Uh, one of them had ginger hair. Terrific, thanks. How long ago was this, do you think? About five minutes ago. Okay, thanks ever so much. Terrific, thank you. Echo control from Tango Echo 21. The two suspects have run up the alleyway between number 37, Cedric Road, up towards the hospital. The car is abandoned and it would appear they've taken the property with them over. Yeah, Roger, can I have the, uh, the CID to this location, please, over? Roger, thank you, noted. Having found the abandoned car, the traffic officer asks for the attendance of the Criminal Investigation Department. One specialist within the CID is the Scenes of Crime Officer. His job is to look for clues to the driver of the vehicle. This is in case it has been stolen. Fingerprints are taken and the details recorded. This information could be of value to the plain closed officers who investigate this case. A computer check at the control room enables the owner of the car to be found and a detective visits the address. his possible suspect for the theft. The officer will find out as much information as he can about them. If they have a criminal record, details of this will be available to him so that he can be fully prepared when he calls upon the suspect. The suspect is taken to the police station, where a sergeant records his presence in the building. Panasonic video camera was stolen from the London Camera Exchange in Chief Street. I have every reason to believe this young man was involved in that incident. I have arrested him on suspicion of the theft of that camera. I see. Right, Colonel Elsa said. Agree with that? Yes. Suspicion of the he is told of his legal rights whilst he is being kept at the police station. First of all, you have the right to have someone informed of your arrest. You have the right to consult a solicitor and a right to consult a copy of the codes of practice. You may do any of these things now, but if you don't, you may still do so later. An explanation of these and your other rights is set out on the back there. All right? That's your call. Okay, that one. Once he has been seen by the sergeant, two detectives interview the suspect. It is their job to work out by questioning if this is the man seen by the camera shop owner. A written account of all questions and answers is made. Should these questions and answers lead the detectives to believe that the suspect is the thief, they will charge him with the theft. He is then taken back to the sergeant. Well, you've been charged with the offence of theft. You're going to be detained in custody here overnight to appear at Bath Magistrates Court at 9.45 in the morning. The reason that you're not getting bail is because you've already committed offences whilst you're already on bail. You understand? Right. Would you like to go straight to the left, please? 
It will now be the job of the legal system to decide if the man is guilty of the theft. The successful working together of these three aspects of the police in Bath helped to solve many problems of tourists and locals alike. Their teamwork in cases, as we have shown, leads to many crimes being solved and a high regard for the police force being maintained within the city.